Today on our 2014 Thor Citation on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar, part number RM-1209-131. Now the Roadmaster sway bar system is designed to give us a connection point from the axle, which is right here, to the frame of the vehicle on both the driver's side, where we have here, and on our passenger side. Now this is designed to counteract each other. So as the RV wants to roll, let's say to the driver's side, it presses down on this end link. As it presses down here, it pulls down on the other side. This is gonna to help to eliminate that side to side roll. Now all vehicles are gonna come standard with a sway bar. This one is a much heavier duty, much better constructed sway bar. The factory sway bar on this vehicle is an inch and an eighth. This one is an inch and a half. The factory sway bar is 1040 steel, just a regular steel, where this is chrome alley. A chrome alley is a blend of two different metals and it offers superior stiffness. Another upgrade that we get from the original factory style sway bar, it's gonna be in all of our bushings. You see at each side of the end link here, we're going to have the polyurethane bushings as well as where the sway bar connects to the axle. Now the polyurethane bushing is going to be a stiffer, more durable solution than what the older, like the, what the factory sway bar in the back there, it has a rubber bushing. Those tend to dry out over time. We never have to worry about that with the polyurethane. And these won't get misshapen as the sway bar moves up and down and as it works, we're never going to have to worry about this becoming oblong. We're also beefing up the end link here on the front, you can see that's a nice heavy duty material and it's going to have all the brackets and components that we need to get it attached with very little modifications required. Now the Roadmaster sway bars are designed to work with most of your factory and aftermarket accessories. As you can see this wouldn't interfere with airbags maybe if you wanted to install those. It wouldn't interfere with a track bar here in the back if you wanted to install that and we get to keep our factory sway bar. It mounts on the rear of the axle here. So it's still gonna do what it was designed to do from the factory. We're just giving it a lot bigger helper there on the front to help, again, eliminate that body roll side to side. Now that body roll side to side can be caused by many different things. It can be like a curvy road, of course, but also crosswinds, passing 18 wheelers, Maybe uneven pavement or ruts in the road can kind of cause that RV to side, side to side. That requires then driver input from you to get it back straight and heading down the road. By adding the sway bar and eliminating that, it requires less driver input at that point to keep it heading straight down the road. That means when you get to your campsite, you won't be as fatigued from a long day's driving. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna start by lowering down the brake cable brackets here. If you follow both the brackets back, right at the bottom of the shock mount here, we're gonna have a bolt. You want a 16 millimeter socket and wrench. We'll get those removed. We'll be replacing the nut and bolt later, so you wanna hang on to them. That'll give us a little bit of flexibility here when it comes time to attach our sway bar up above it. Next on each side, we want to take the nuts off of the U-bolt that's on the front side of the axle. You want to hang on to the nuts. We'll take that U-bolt off. We'll be replacing it. Now we'll just lift that U-bolt up and off and do the same thing on the other side as well. Now we'll place the U-bolt that comes with our kit down through our factory U-bolt hole location. You want to make sure that it sits in the little saddle for it on top of the spring pack. Now we're going to be using 720 here on the driver's side. You can see the holes are closer to the back of the bracket and the flange to mount the sway bars towards the inside. And we just replace our factory nuts, get them threaded on and torqued back down. Now we've got our frame brackets we're gonna be putting in position. These are gonna mount into two holes that we're gonna drill out here and here. This is the front of your leaf spring 
This is the cross member that comes over. You'll see where this bolt is. You're going to have a bracket that comes up and out. This is going to fit right in that pocket. We want to keep it flush against this edge. And you'll notice some caulking up here. That prevents you from doing it. So if you have this situation, you want to remove this caulking so it'll go up right against that side plate. Now you just want to use a clamp or vice grips. We want to get that clamped in position and we'll mark the center of the hole here on the back side and the hole here on the top. All right, now we'll just check above the holes we've got marked. We're going to start with a small pilot hole and we're going to enlarge these to 17 30 seconds. Now we're going to place a flat washer on one of our shorter half inch bolts. I'm going to bring that down through our hole. Place our bracket up on. I'm going to place on another flat washer, one of the nylon lock nuts. We'll do the same thing for the forward attachment point. Now we'll snug these down and torque them to the specifications listed in our instructions. Now we'll follow that same procedure for attaching the bracket on the passenger side. Now we're ready to get our sway bar lifted up into position. As we do this, the brake lines that we removed, we want to go up and over those on both sides. So we'll just kind of rotate it up and in. Now we want to take the lubricant that comes with the kit. We want to go all the way around the inside of our bushing. It's going to prevent any squeaking if any water were to get inside of there. Just want to give it a good coat evenly all the way around. We're going to do that on both bushings. Now we're going to bring our bushing up and position it around the sway bar. So just kind of pull at that gap. Then we'll rotate it so the flat spot is facing our bracket. Place our saddle over that. And we'll slide through again another short half inch bolt, place a flat washer on the back, and secure it with the nylon lock nut. Now if you do the top here on both sides, it should level it out so you can get your bottom bolts in place as well. Now we want to slide our bottom bolt through. Once we have these started, we'll do the same thing on our passenger side. Now we'll use our 19 millimeters again. I'm going to snug down our bolts and we'll get those torqued. I like to make the bottom of the saddle here level with the bottom of that bracket. Now we'll reattach our brake line bracket here. When you tighten this down, you will have to hold down on it. Up here on the front, you want to get clearance between the sway bar as you tighten down that bracket. Just want to check for clearance. Make sure you're good around the sway bar bracket there and also the back side of the sway bar right up here. Now we're ready to get our end links in position. You can see we've got two different sizes here. It really depends on this area right here underneath the leaf. This one has a block. If it has the block, you're likely going to need the longer one. If you don't have that block, the shorter one should work. If you're unsure, you can hold your sway bar up. It's going to make contact with the bottom of the leaf springs. You'll bring that down just a little bit. And as you can see, the larger one is certainly the one we need to go to. If this hole is up here, then you'll want to use the shorter one. You can see that's not going to make contact, so it's not the one we want. Now we've got our bushings that we need to install in the proper end link. You see these just pull apart. And there are two different sizes. We've got a half inch and a 7 16 The 7 16 we want on one side of the end leak, the half inch we want on the other. Now you're going to have a little bit of this grease left over, so we are going to just use a little bit in our end link here to prevent any squeaking. If we ever have any moisture get in there. And we'll slide half of it in one side there. 
And from the other side, we'll push on the other half. And just do the same thing on the other end using the larger one. Now we can slide our end link up into position. We want the 7 16 inch hole end to be up at the top. Now we can slide our 7 16 inch bolt through. Now you want the head of the bolt to be towards the outside of the coat. We'll thread on our nylon lock nut there. Do the same thing over on our passenger side. Now we'll take our larger bolt. We're going to put one of the 9 16 inch washers on the outside. Put one on the inside. Then we'll bring our sway bar up and pass it through. And then we'll have our nylon lock nut there on the outside. We'll do that on the passenger side. Now we go through, snug these down, and torque them to specification. Now with everything torqued down properly, that's going to complete our installation of the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar. Part number RM-1209-131 on our 2014 Thor Citation on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis.